All right. Well, church, are you guys ready to jump in and have some fun today? No, you're not. Come on. Are you guys ready now? All right, let's do it. Let's do it. Well, hey, my name is Josh Trigenti. I'm one of the pastors here of engagement. Uh, and that means a couple things. I get to oversee all of our groups and classes, uh, but also our men's and women's ministry in our online church. So by the way, shout out to those of you online this morning. Jump in the chat and let us know you're here. We'd love to say, hey. Uh, but I love this church. I love this church. I love this people. I love what God's doing here uh, in Tempe, but I, I love the impact that we're able to be able to make beyond these doors and beyond these walls. I love what God is doing here in Tempe, genuinely. And I, I don't say that because I'm a pastor on staff and, and I, get, I get paid to be able to do what I love to do. Um, nope, I, I love this church because I love this people and I love what God is up to. You see, we're in this series called You Belong Here. And, and I, I was thinking about it this past couple of weeks and really on a personal note, I was thinking about it, how we hear this phrase. I don't know about you, but sometimes when we hear the phrase, you belong here, it's a, it's a popular buzzword right now. And I want you to know this morning, I don't know what you come in the doors with, I don't know what you're tuning in online with right now, uh, but I, I want you to know that this phrase, you belong here, is not just a, a sermon series title, it's actually what we mean. You belong here. You belong here. No, you belong here. As part of this church, but as part of the, the global Big C Church, you belong here. And then there's not a condition to your belonging. It, there's not an age limit. There, there's not a minimum or a maximum. It's not what, what you wear or how you look. It's not about your, your, uh, your race or your gender. It's not about your socioeconomic status. It's not even about, get this, it doesn't, you don't even have to believe what I, we, or this church believes. You still belong here. You are a child of God, whether you like it or not. And because of that, is, that's the condition to begin to belong, is that you are a child of God. And so this morning, I want to lean into this idea, this big idea that you belong here and you have a seat at the table. You have a seat at the table I didn't do this in the first hour, but I'll do it right now because I, I just, I can't get away from this image of a giant dining table. That I, I picture it like this, where Jesus is at the head and there's no end in sight. Welcome to the church of God. And it's got everything you need. For me, I love food. But I love people. And at that table, I see both people and food and my heart lights up. Let's go. But I, I, I want to propose to you that the kingdom of heaven looks like that. A giant table, but the table of relationship. Where you and I can come together and be who we are. All that we are, exactly as we are. This morning, with this big idea, my invitation is also this, I'm gonna give you the ends. I want you to start with the end in mind with me. That I, I, I wanna be able to get to the end and, and have you ask this question, now what? I, I wanna invite you then after that now what to be able to, to, to find your fit and make a commit. Find your fit and make a commit. Because no matter where you're, in the, you're at in, in this room or online, no matter what your, your life looks like, I, I'm willing to bet that there's a commitment and a fit that you need to find this semester. And I want to help you find that. Can we do that together? Maybe. Let's do it. Let me pray for us real quick and we'll jump in. Hey, Lord, we just thank you for this morning, for the joy and honor of getting to bring you praise, but to gather as one. Lord, whether we're in the room or online, together as one, Lord, we thank you that you are here with us. Lord, we ask right now that you would, you would move and speak to us. Lord, your servants are here listening, hungry, ready to hear what you have for us this week. Lord, would you help us identify the place that we fit, but also the place that we need to commit. And we give this to you in your name. We said, amen. <clears throat> At the heart of all human connection is a longing for belonging. 
At the heart of all human connection is there a longing for belonging. Researchers have maintained this idea for generations. And they determined that it's one of the most fundamental human needs. Beyond food and shelter, they say that nothing promotes human flourishing quite like having a people and a place to belong. Social researcher and author Brene Brown uh, writes of belonging. By the way, Brene Brown is one of the most incredible social scientists I, I've been able to engage with. Um, her, her books, uh, Braving the Wilderness or Daring Greatly, are incredible. Uh, so if you need a good book recommendation, start there. Uh, but she also does a, po- uh, excuse me, a, a TED Talk on the power of vulnerability. And it's one of my go-to uh, TED Talks of all time. It's my top five. And I watch this this TED Talk probably two or three times a year because I want to be somebody who lives uh, and leads a life of of vulnerability. But authenticity is really that word. And so I uh, I love what what she writes when it comes to belonging. That's a big part of her work. And she says, belonging is the innate human desire to be part of something bigger than ourselves. She goes on to say that because this yearning is so primal, we often try to acquire it by fitting in and seeking approval, which are not only hollow substitutes for belonging, but they're often barriers to it. You see, I would propose to you that some of us, we we are so accustomed to trying to seek how to fit in or, or seek approval when we were called to stand out. And I wanna propose to you that you have something to give. You have something to bring to the table of relationship. You do. I do. We do. But she says this in her her TED Talk. She says that a deep sense of love and belonging is in, get this, irreducible need of all people. We are biologically, cognitively, physically, and spiritually wired to love, to be loved, and to belong. When those needs are not met, we don't function as we were meant to. We break, we fall apart, we numb, we ache, we hurt others, we get sick. A deep sense of love and belonging is what we all need. Being part of something bigger than ourselves is something that we all need. Because without, we begin to fall apart. Here's my question this morning. How are you doing in your belonging? How are you doing? Not how are other people, how are you doing? How are you doing in being part of something bigger than yourself? How are you doing in meeting your irreducible need to love, to be loved, and to belong? Do you have a fit? Do you have a people? Do you have a thing? What is it? I'll pose it this way. Are you just attending to it or are you engaged in it? If you're just attending to it, it's not the same as engaging with it. Are you just consuming of it? You show up to the table of relationship and you just consume what's on the table and not give what you have. Or are you contributing where you're actually giving of what you have? You and I are unique. And we have gifts and abilities and talents and dreams and desires and goals. And God is partnering with each and every single one of us to bring what we have to impact community together. You see, what social scientists and researchers like Brown have attempted to define in in secular terms, Scripture makes very clear. In fact, in Genesis, we see the foundation of this. Now, I want you to look at Genesis chapter 1, verses 26 through 27 with me. God is talking amongst himself because he's three persons in one. And this is what he says. He says, let us make man in our image and after our likeness. And let them have dominion over the fish of the sea, over the birds of the heavens, over the livestock, and over all the earth and every creeping thing. So God created man in his own image, and in the image of God he created them. Male and female, he created them. You see, there's no condition to your belonging in the kingdom of God. Here's a kick. That we are designed 
in his image and after his likeness, which means that as his image and in his likeness, we can reflect his oneness. Let me say that again. As his image, we're image bearers. And in his likeness, we're becoming more like him. We reflect his oneness, what he's established as a standard. I would propose to you that community is part of the character of God. Community is part of the character of God. And you could say that God is community. And we have been created to reflect that aspect of who he is. That aspect of his character. Just as the Father, Son, and Holy Spirit are one, and they operate in, uh, in a community and a togetherness as one, so are we designed to operate in a community and a togetherness as one. Maybe for some of you, that, that just put into words what you maybe been feeling. You've been feeling this, this craving to know and be known by others. You, you've been looking for something that, that, that's bigger than yourself, and it's your longing to belong. It's your, it's your longing to know and be known, to love and be loved. It's what we're all wired with. If you're taking notes, I want to encourage you to jot this down. I was thinking about this this week, and I, I love this thought. That from the foundation of creation, God has placed an eternal longing for belonging in our souls. From the foundation of creation, God has placed an eternal longing for belonging in our souls. In other words, it's not just something that you can acquire. It's something that you kind of are. You you are uh, wired already, whether you like it or not, for this longing of something more. Ecclesiastes 3.11 tells us this, that God has set eternity in the hearts of man. He set eternity in the hearts of you and I. Which means that he's already set within us this idea of something way bigger than ourselves, far grander than what we can conceive. And I believe that that is something truly profound that we get to only taste here on this side of heaven. But we were created in his image and his likeness so that we might not just look like God, but that we might reflect him. That what we see, we can also become like. That's the purpose of belonging. Our innate longing is for belonging, and ultimately it's in community with God and with others. It's the vertical and the horizontal. I love this passage in John chapter 13, 34 to 35, because this theme of connection and belonging and togetherness runs throughout Scripture. You could pick any book of the Bible, and you'll see this theme in some way, some, somehow. And I love what Jesus says in John 13, 34 to 35, in what he this, this is famously called the Upper Room Discourse. This is the start of the Upper Room Discourse. And this discourse is Jesus teaching his disciples what it means to live the Christian life. But more, more to that, they, they, he's teaching them how to live in accordance with the Holy Spirit. And how do you live uh, in a connection and a connectedness with God himself? It's through his Holy Spirit. He's the gateway. And so if you want to, by the way, if you want to know what God thinks, ask. If you want to know how God feels, you can feel. You can ask. If, if you want to know what, what God uh, believes, you, you can ask. Whether it, it, it's, it's your situation or your circumstance or your, your, your future, God can speak. But this is what Jesus says in 34 and 35 of chapter 13. He says, a new commandment I give to you that you love what? Come on, let's do that again. That you love one another. Just as I have loved you, you are also to love one another. By this, all people. Who? All people. Not just some people, not only the people that you like, not only the people that are in this church, not only the people that, that, uh, that kind of compliment you and, and, and give you praises. Nope, all people. All, all people includes the people that you disagree with too. But by your love, all people will know that you are my disciples if you have love for one another. In fact, I think Jesus is pretty adamant about this whole one another thing. I think he's pretty clear. And it's a pretty big deal. And in fact, uh, this this phrase, love one another, the one another is actually a a, a, uh, a pronoun. It's a a plural pronoun. The, The verb comes before it. And you can't make something plural and personal without the verb. It's just a one another. And so it's a, it's, a, it's a really big deal 
Because throughout Scripture, there's over 50 different commands to one another. For example, it says to serve one another, encourage one another, honor one another, care for one another, be devoted to one another, build one another, stir one another up to love and good deeds, pray for one another. All of these and so many more are the one another's you and I are called to do. But we cannot have, we cannot have this verb without the, pro, the, the, the pronoun. Like the pronoun doesn't make sense without the verb. Like we have to do something. There's an action. Verbs are action words, right? And so in this case, it's love. But the number one command is to love. Like this serve and honor and care and build up and stir and pray. Those are all good and great. But that, that's not the number one. The number one is love. And so what's the quality of your love? Let me propose this to you, is that to one another is actually to practice community. To one another is to actually practice community. To love is to actually practice community. To love the person across the table from you with your headship Jesus himself is actually what community gets to look like. But when you do something about it, you practice it. I believe that belonging in the context of genuine community is actually the standard for all of us in Christ Jesus. I think that community is actually the standard of what God has for us. In fact, I think it's what he's, he's conceived of for his church. But there's, a, there's an element here in this, in this passage in, in 13, 34 to 35 that I think it is profound. That he says at the, at the end of verse 35 that if you have love for one another... In other words, this, this passage is really corporate. It's not an evangelistic term. I mean, there, there are those, but not this one. This one includes that, but its primary focus is corporate. It's you and I. And if we don't have love for one another, guess what? It doesn't matter what you go and tell the world, they're going to see by your love that it's not the truth. How scary is it that we can focus maybe more on evangelism? And I'm not knocking evangelism or anything like that. There is a place and a time, and it's necessary. We have, we have the best news, and we have to tell it. But you know what? So many Christians uh, are actually the reason why so many people are burned and hurt by the church. Why they won't grace these doors. Even though we believe, and we say, and we mean that you belong here we don't have love for one another, and so we hold each other back. We hold others back from hearing the truth of the gospel. Why does it matter? Well, Psalm 133, 1, I love what David writes here. He goes, behold, how good and pleasant it is when brothers dwell in unity. You see, some of the most beautiful pictures of unity, I believe, actually happen through the lens of community. Some of the most beautiful pictures of belonging and connection happen only through the lens of community. Community, therefore, isn't a strategy. It's actually the essence of what God has conceived of for his church. You and I doing life together in an intentional way, showing up to the table of relationship, and not just, just uh, consuming but contributing, it's actually what God intended for us to be like. So here's a question. What is your community like? Who are your people? Who do you fit with? Where are you engaged at? What are you engaged in? Here's the follow up Is it working? Is it meaningful? Does it help? You see, here's the reality there's a couple studies done in recent years, the first in 2015 by Barna. Barna's always doing a study. Uh, if you're not tapped into Barna, I I'd highly recommend. It it'll blow you away. It'll blow you away. But here's what Barna released in 2015. He said that one in three, 18 to 35 years old, year olds, said that they often feel deeply cared for by those around them, which means that 67% in 2015 don't. 67% felt like they didn't that they didn't uh, feel cared for. I don't know about you, but that wrecks me. 
The same study indicated that only 32% felt that somebody actually saw them and believed in them. Let me put, put it this way. Seeing them is like, hey, you belong here. Come sit at my table. But then, then being able to go, I believe in you and mean it means that, hey, not only are you at the table, but guess what? You also have something to give. And I want, you to, to, I want to call that gold out in you. I want to help you be a contributor and not just a consumer. But we're, we're going to do it together through the lens of community and relationship and togetherness. 32% felt like nobody did that. Meanwhile, 43% acknowledged feeling consistently, consistently lonely and isolated. I don't know if you've ever felt that way. Consistently lonely and isolated. Maybe you do feel that way. Let me give you a follow-up to the study in 2019. Cigna released a, a similar study, similar demographic They found that three out of every five adults, or 61%, reported that they sometimes or always feel lonely. There's a couple things that we need to catch there. One is that four years prior, this demographic was 18 to 35 years old. Four years later, guess what? They are still the adults in this study. Which means that, and it also increased from 43% to 61%. And you don't have to be a math major to, to know that that's a difference, right? It's a 22% difference. And if you, if, if you factor the year-over-year year increase that has happened from 2015 to 2019, you have an average year-over-year year increase of 4.5% of loneliness and isolation. Let me translate that to us right now. That means 7 out of 10 of us in this room, 7 out of 10 of us online right now, feel lonely and isolated. We feel like we don't have a people to belong to. We don't have a fit. They also said that three out of 10, 30% of us in this room right now, online right now, would identify with this statement that we, other than our immediate family, do not have more than three key and meaningful relationships in our life. Y'all, let that sit with you for a moment. We're struggling. And this is, not, this is all before COVID. I don't want to see those numbers right now. Because I know they're higher. In fact, I ran into a study not too long ago, I think last week or two weeks ago, where that number was guesstimated to be 70 and 80% in loneliness and isolation, even with things regathering. And so, it's this thing that's bigger than us. It's this longing for belonging that's really driving our need for connection and engagement. Can I give us a hope infusion right now? You guys ready for some hope? Yeah, who needs some hope right now? Come on. All right, let, let me give you a hope infusion. In similar studies, 83% of people said that because of their church community, because of you, because of me, because of us together, they felt loved and valued. Yeah, woo. Woo. They felt loved and valued, 83%. 76% said, said that I feel like I'm part of the family. In other words, I feel like not only do I belong, but I can grow in my depths of belonging. And then 63% said that they feel, because of a church family, relief from the anxiety of daily life as a result. Whoa. Because of you. Because of belonging. Because of connectedness. Because of engagement. They're looking to take their belonging to a new level. And I want grace to be a place that people can not only just say, hey, I belong here, but they can find their belonging. I want each and every single one of us in this room and online right now to be able to say, hey, this year I found my fit. This year I belong in in something bigger than myself. And maybe I gave my life away, but maybe I joined something and I was a part of something. I want that for every single person here at Grace. You know, we we, we are launching small groups this week. We are launching our women's ministries this week. Uh, We we are launching, uh, college groups are are getting ready to to launch uh, in a couple weeks. They're they're launching their their crews, their version of small groups. And if you are not plugged into something, now's the time. 
So wherever you're at in the room or online this morning, I I need you to know this, that Jesus never said, attend me. He said, follow me. Attendance does not equal engagement, but following closely does. Just because you attend doesn't mean you're engaged. But what are we engaged on? Well, we're engaged in the mission. We're engaged on the mission of loving God and loving others. We're engaged on the mission of one anothering. We're engaged in the mission of being part of God's family, not just as consumers, but as contributors. We're engaged on the mission of getting out of rows and into circles. Because here's the reality. Here's the reality. I I think we could agree that we all want the church to grow. We all want to, I would love to see every seat in this building filled. I would love to run into the issue online that we have to figure out how to get more bandwidth because we have so many people who want to be a part of what's going on here at Grace. I, I would love to see that. That's a dream. But you know what? Just as the church grows larger, uh, if we don't get in smaller in some aspects, we actually miss the point. Because it's not about the numbers. Like, we, we want to go deep just as much as we want to go wide. Amen. And so the goal, the goal of our belonging, the goal of being part of something bigger than ourselves is that we might become more like Jesus. Again, it doesn't matter what you come in the doors with. It doesn't matter what you show up to the table of relationship with. You belong here. And whatever you belong with, We want to help you become more like Jesus as a result. So there's three things as I I get ready to wrap up here. There's three things, three areas that that I I think all of us are are part of. You might be asking, okay, Josh, well, then now what? What, What's the next step? What do I do here? Where do I go from here? Well, here are three different avenues for you to consider. One, it might be time to diversify your community. It might be time to try something different. You see, maybe you, you, you've been here this morning, you showed up and, and, and you know a few faces and, and you, you've been around for a little bit or maybe this is your first time and we say, welcome, we're glad you're here. I, I would love for you to get to know somebody today. But, but maybe you, you, you showed up and, and you've not been, uh, you, you go, I, I just don't feel like I'm connected. I don't feel like I'm part of something bigger than myself. You maybe have some resemblance of a community, but that innate desire To belong, you don't feel it. You don't feel like it's been met. Maybe you've been in the same community group or same uh, uh, class here at Grace or same style of learning or same method uh, of teaching and connection. What would it look like this semester? What would it look like for you today to make a commitment for this semester to try something different? What could that look like? Maybe it's time to try something new, explore a new community, find a new focus, serve in a new format. See, this week we have a lot going on, and it's awesome. Mo mentioned that our Alpha is launching this Tuesday. Y'all, when he said that 40 people are signed up for Alpha, do you know what that means? That means that last semester when we launched online only, it wasn't an in-person gathering, it was only online, there were 14 people who were part of that Alpha program. This week, we have 40 people part of Alpha in person. Yeah, that's amazing. I would love for maybe some of us, you go, I, I have questions about life. I'm still trying to figure things out. I don't know what, what I, I don't know. And so, but I need community and I want to wrestle with questions in my faith and about my faith. And, and Alpha is the place for you. Even if you've been a Christian for 30 years or you're just getting started or you're not even there yet, like Alpha is the place for you. I want you to to find your fit in Alpha. I would love for the problem to be on on Tuesday morning when we're back in the office for Jonathan and I with with, with crazy hair going, "How how do we meet the need? Because there's more than 40 people and we need some more group leaders to be a part of that. I think that would be incredible. I think that would be incredible. But maybe uh, ladies in the room, we're launching our women's studies, and guess what? This semester alone, there are five gathering times that you can be a part of. On Wednesdays, there's a 6 a.m. for you early risers. I don't know how you do it, but uh, more power to you. I have a rule in life. I don't do anything before 8.30, so it works, kind of. But maybe, maybe it's a 6 a.m. Bible study. 
Maybe it's a 9 a.m. Bible study, and, and we not only have a Bible study, but we also have a mom-to-mom group. If you're, if you're a mom and you go, I need to be connected with other moms, and I need a place for my kids to just uh, to be themselves and, and let, the, let the crazy out, come to mom-to-mom, 9 a.m. right here. You can sign up online. We have a 6.30 p.m. Wednesday night. We also have Thursday morning is an online uh, women's gathering Bible study that I would love for you to be a part of. But maybe, let's be honest, Maybe you're a lady in the room or online and you go, you know what, I've been a part of these studies before. I just couldn't find my fit. It wasn't for me. Can I challenge you? What could it look like for you to try it again? What could it look like if instead of what you, going to, to see what you can give, what could it look like if you went with the lens of I want to give? I want to give my life away. I want to meet others who are in my same boat. I bet you might find your best friend. It's possible. But number two, there's some others in, in, the, in the room that, that maybe a study or a, a, a class isn't really what you're looking for. And, and it's time to join a small group. It's time to build your circle. Build your cir- circle by joining a small group. You, 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 you have a circle of friends, right? And, and you become like the top five people you hang around. Here's a quick question. Uh, I didn't ask this in the first service, but who are you surrounding yourself with? Because you're gonna mirror those people. And so what could it look like for you to find a kind of circle that actually propels you to become more like Jesus? To move you towards something bigger than yourself. If your current community, your current friends aren't doing that with you, it might be time to diversify your community. It might be time to shake up your circle. I'm not saying you get rid of everybody and you put everybody on the back burner and you, and you just quit everything, all right? You can't go cold turkey all, all, all the time, okay? But there might be an opportunity is what I'm asking. What could that look like for you? What could it look like for you to commit to joining a small group? Y'all, we already have a couple small groups that have been meeting over the past uh, several months and uh, semesters. And uh, this year we've, we've launched even more small groups, and right now for the fall, we have over 13 small groups that are slated and ready to launch this semester. 13, that's amazing, yeah. But we're not done, because there's many of you who are still looking to get involved in a small group, and, and you know what, we're, we're on the lookout for some more leaders. You see, without leaders, without hosts who can help us facilitate a, a conversation, a, we can't get people plugged into a small group. And so there's a need. There's a need. Maybe you're a college student right now and you're ready to, to get plugged into something. Maybe you're here for the first time. Uh, I know schools are starting back and you go, I need a people. Jump into a college small group. Get involved. Be a part of something bigger than yourself. The last one I've already kind of alluded to it is I want to encourage somebody somewhere to give your life away. Either lead a group or consider serving. Lead a group or consider serving. We, uh, here's my ask. I'm, I'm putting it out there. We, we got one last service, and I'm so pumped for it. But we're looking for six new group leaders in, in order to help meet the needs here in this church for small groups. We're looking for six new leaders. We got one. I need five more. Maybe the Lord is speaking to you and, and, and motivating you to be part of something like that. You go, well, Josh, I'm not a leader. Forget the leadership title. Here's a a couple quick conditions. Are are you friendly? Can you welcome people? Can you facilitate a discussion? Do you have a place that people can gather? And you're like, all right, then you're in. Let's go. But, But maybe you go, I don't have a place. I got that unlocked too. Maybe, just maybe, what could it look like if you led your group at the local coffee shop? or the, a restaurant down the line. I, I think it, it could be amazing. Personal dream, I would love to have a small group at a bar. And I, I not, not for the drinking part. <laughs> Come on now, behave. But because I know that my community identifies in some of that, people that are not yet in this church identify with some of that, and that there could be a revival coming out of a, a bar because of a small group right? What could it look like for you to commit to leading something for a semester? Not your life, a semester. 
I would love to chat with you. We're going to be out on the, uh, the porch in the Ramadas today after service. Come connect with us. We'll have members of some of our different teams and groups. We'd love for you to be there. Uh, we'd love to uh, get you connected into the place that you're looking to get connected and engaged in. What's your next step? What are you going to commit to today for this semester? Church, let me pray for us. Hey, Lord, we just thank you right now that you are a God who sees us and knows us. Lord, that you had a purpose behind our creation, that, that you wanted us to be a people who were, who were created for, for something bigger than ourselves. Lord, you gave us uh, this innate desire for, for more, but to belong. You gave us this longing for belonging. Lord, right now, there, there's some of us in this room who, who it's time for us to diversify. And I believe, Lord, right now that you're speaking to those people. I believe right now that you are speaking and you are highlighting that maybe some of the problem areas that we've had in some of our relationships or some of the connection points that we've had. Um, and Lord, I, I really do believe that uh, if, if that's you, that you would uh, mobilize us, empower us to make a shift, diversify this, this semester. Not burn bridges, but just make a shift. Lord, that there's some of us in this room, maybe you're convicting us right now of, of our need to belong to something. And a small group is the avenue or something like a class like Alpha is the avenue. Lord, what could that look like? Lord, would you give us the courage and the boldness to do something about that today? Today. And last, I think there's some of us in this room, Lord, that you are already giving us maybe a picture, or a download in our, in our hearts and minds of what it might be if we were to lead a group in our own homes, what it might be if we, we led a group in, in, a, in some kind of small group format in the valley. Lord, would you give us the unction, the motivation to, to do something about that today? Lord, we long to belong, but we long to belong with you and a part of your people. So Lord, go before us today and this week, this semester. Lord, we thank you for a new beginning. In Jesus' name we say, amen.